Welcome to Voice Print with Trevor Duvall and guests. And now, your host and mine, Trevor Duvall. You know what's nice about doing uh, your own sound effects in a show is that the audience is always so, you know, so willing to applaud. They love you, Trevor. They love you. They always do. And they always will. There was a girl in the fourth row and she was looking at you then. <laughs> oh, and I've been looking She was at the her. one that whistled. <laughs> Welcome back, uh, my people. Welcome back to Voice Print with Trevor DeVal and guests. I am your intrepid host, Trevor DeVal. And we are on episode... The eighth of voice print. It's uh, it's been a long road. It's been a hard road at times, but we've made it here finally, finally, together with our guests and our listeners and our integrity. We have made it. I'm sorry, you lost me at integrity. Right, yeah, sorry you about completely that. completely lost me at integrity. <laughs> it all went out the window. We're having a lovely moment, and it all went away. Oh, I tend to ruin it right at the last yeah, bit. Yeah, you it's do. It's horrible. <clears throat> so, uh, apparently, a couple weeks ago, my uh, Diablo episode on Fantastic Four aired on YTV, and uh, it, it aired to raved reviews, which was nice. Uh, so, thank you, Martin, for the compliments. Martin, Martin of Martin's Mailbag, who we'll be hearing from uh, later in the show, wrote a very nice email to me saying about uh, how wonderful my Diablo performance was. So, thank you very much for that. It was a fun show to do, and um, yeah... Uh, the best question ever contest. I know some of you out there are uh, are wondering how come he didn't like just why didn't he give us an answer? We asked the questions and n there was no winner. Well, tonight uh, there may be a winner. We shall see. We shall see because we do have some very good questions uh, brought to us by our listeners. Um, also, one thing I just want to put out there to uh, <clears throat> all you kids out there in internet land. Uh, if you have any uh, pictures or video or anything like that of conventions we've done, any sort of interesting moments involving the voice actors and preferably involving things, you know, tasteful. <laughs> Actually, I don't even care about the tasteful, but yeah. if you have any sort of uh, pictures, uh, video, anything like that, um, send it in to me. I'd love to get a little compilation of stuff going. That'd be kind of a cool little thing to have on the site. So you can send um, send your stuff into fans at trevordeval.com as is usual. Uh, before we get into the long-awaited episode eight the long-awaited episode eight i want to seven play... episodes in the making <laughs> if you hear one episode this fall god you beat me to the punch you bastard Damn, sorry <laughs> rewind start again uh before we before i do the official introduction of our very special guest here uh i do want to play a little bit of his very talented voice for you. Oh, today marks our 100th acquisition. Like, this makes our marionette collection complete and stuff. What? Hey, where am I? Dang, we like got the wrong one. Oh, no! Hello? Why did we have to grab the wrong one at our moment of triumph? Who are you? Tell me now, who are you? Goblins? Here you calling goblins? We are marionette collectors so great, we border on invincible. <laughs> Rinzo the core. Tenhei the rare. Kenzuki the pure. So you're thieves? We are not thieves! We're like collectors and stuff! How's that different? We have love. We acquired these with great effort and being true to ourselves, that's like the collector spirit and stuff. But it's not polite to steal. Yeah, like, how would you know and stuff? Why should I know? Hello, don't you think she talks back too much? Like, what kind of stupid program did Otaro Mami have put into you? Well... 
Otaru and me, Cherry, Bloodberry, all live together just like best friends. <gasps> She's totally screwed up. Crazy. Marionette's living like the best of friends? <laughs> don't stare, nasty men. You stink. Well, we don't like you either. Like, we like proper young ladies and stuff, not flat-nosed runts like you. <laughs> you, 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 like, how dare you and stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, fans everywhere, the one, the only, Scott McNeil. <sighs> you don't have to do that. I can do that. I can, oh, sorry, I, you can I, add I can, that in there. That's right. They like me. They really like me. <laughs> Hello, everybody. You all look so marvelous tonight, I must say. Thank you for uh, for coming out. Well, thank you for having me. Well, it's a delight to see you in the closet where <laughs> everyone... Well, other men than you, you have You can't say coming out and in the closet all in the same <laughs> bench, Trevor. I just want you to know that. Uh, <clears throat> I didn't mean to make you... I didn't mean to suggest anything. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for <clears throat> having me. It's uh, it's it's been a long time coming, you know. We've uh, we've talked to a lot of a lot of the a lot of the big boys in town here, and uh, eventually we had to we had to get. To we the ran out run. of talent, mm. so uh... <laughs> that's right. Oh well, yeah, you know, we've really you know we've completely run out, man. So there's something we've I know there's one person left. <laughs> Not him, man. I know it's the only one we've got left, man. <laughs> Seriously, like everyone's either done or they're out of town. Is that Rimmer? Absolutely. <laughs> You're such a smeggered man. <laughs> You're always wary and about your looks and stuff, man. I've got a plan. I'm going to Fiji. But, sir, <laughs> if I had a stomach, I could just barf, sir. But that goes against Space Corps Directive 3.146. Okay, I'm a geek. It's like my favorite show. I have them on both VHS and DVD. Uh, it's a class. So do I. It's, uh, I love I, Red Dwarf. You can't go wrong. It's intelligent science fiction. It's it uses its imagination and its brain and its powers of critical thinking. And it's funny as hell. Yes, it's awesome. Did you know apparently they did like uh they did an American pilot. Yes. Uh. <laughs> yes. PU, I hope you're not listening. <laughs> El Stinko, El Stinko. Um El Stinko Grande. Muy muy Stinko. Muy Stinko. So yeah, welcome man. It's going to it's going to be uh it's going to be great. I'm I'm a big fan of you. I'm so really excited Bill. to be here so, too. I must say it's this is just, great. Just, it's 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 a testament of how far I've come that you are sitting in my little studio right now with me to talk to me. It's great. Why have you got me sitting on a bed of thumbtacks, Trevor? <laughs> this is really uncomfortable. <laughs> We're going to get the ball rolling here um, with a little bit of your history. The history of Scott McNeil. And now... Voice Print with Trevor DeVal and guests presents In Memoria, a history of our guests' long and faithful service to the cause of voice acting. Oh good, it's my obituary. <laughs> <laughs> You're the first one who's picked up on the obituary reference. You know, You're the I first one. I swear to God, I have never been treated like this. <laughs> Look, you get Letty on the phone. You just tell him, forget it. I'm not doing any more of these fucking hokey little shows. You know who I am, God damn it. That song, that's worse than, that's worse than pay me out. Yes. Oh, God. For fuck's sake, you're going to book me on fucking living with the stars or something. If I could dance, I could do dancing with the stars. I don't have to do this shit. You get me in the same show that fucking Webster kid's on. <laughs> Fucking Emmanuel, little douchebag. Little... I don't have to take this. I have over 200 voices. I was on fucking saber right at you. You, you fucking rights I was. But it was your best work. That's why we played the clip. Because it was some of your best really? work. Really? You think so? I'm sorry. They're really nice after all. The problem with a guest like you, Scott, is that uh, to talk about your history, your career history... We could be here for several days. I often go off the IMDb site because... Were we on the um, air for that whole thing? Yeah. Oh, perfect. <laughs> I want to send another thing. Get me another goddamn chick. You call this... I said chin not fuck. What's the matter with you? I have never in my whole life... I am somebody. Well, you know, Emmanuel I, uh, Lewis, you little Webster <laughs> creep. 
I don't, uh, I don't believe in editing, so, you know, because it takes too much time. So. Yeah, and it's too much like work. So I've got 13 pages here from IMDb. Obviously, we can't uh, hit on all of them, but I'd like to just uh, go through and, and, and just point out a, a couple of the well, ones. Let's that dance across the high line, point, shall we? <laughs> Skipping from peak to peak and ignoring the valleys in between. You've had an incredible career, sir. You've been on everything forever. And where do you start? Let's start with something very recent. When I started, we didn't have fancy microphones. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, you held up the tape and you, you yelled at it. <laughs> That's right, tape. <laughs> microphones, you bunch of sissy ass. <laughs> and when I was a young man, beginning out, beginning out, starting again. Steady anyway, I digress. Out. Okay, starting with something recent. Starting with something recent. Go ahead, Trevor, you're on the air. Oh, thanks. Uh, I'd like to talk about Stormhawks. Go ahead, Trevor, an excellent choice. Very proud of that show here yeah. on the uh, Trevor DeVall show. <laughs> Trevor yes, Val. it's my show, so <laughs> shut up! <laughs> Stormhawks, you play Stork. Uh, among many, 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 many others, but Stork is sort of like the the main guy you play in the show, right? Yeah, and that I'm just show. Just gonna nod from now on. Yeah. <laughs> You should hear the Sam Vincent episode. Oh my God, I couldn't get a word in it. Holy Troy. Uh Yeah, so that show's getting huge reviews. I saw myself the on the side of a bus yesterday. Really? Yeah, the in, Starbucks in, banner on the, in Vancouver. Really? Not in Houston. I was going to uh, say because it would have been know. cooler. But they're watching it down there. Yeah, yeah, that's what they're. I've had. I've had kids give me or you know people at conventions give me artwork of stork and wow it's pretty cool <clears throat> so it's already starting to take off oh yeah big time that's that's cool that's very cool uh what would be a lot cooler is if i was on the well, show but we're not going to um we're not gonna talk about that dude you were the background dragon booster man yeah you're right anyway so it's uh yeah that's you and sam and uh maddie hill maddie and... hill kiarazani and the lovely and talented when he's wearing men's clothing Colin Murdoch <laughs> who plays like my total favorite character on this show and who's that Junko Junko oh cool, you know I mean Colin commits <laughs> he commits well <laughs> Colin makes me laugh so hard I sometimes will pass like whole you know like once I passed an entire watermelon rind through my nose when I was eating well, and he made me laugh that's a funny man he is. He's, he's awesome. Um, you played somebody on uh, Le, Le Quatre Fantastique. Le Quatre Fantastique. Oui, oui, the Fantastique uh, Four. Bienvenue à Canada. You play uh, uh, Annihilation. Annihilus. Annihilus. Annihilation is the episode. Annihilus is the character. He's a <laughs> rather shrieky, psychotic madman, if you will. A oh, reptiloid. Or a, a, a sort of an insectoid, if you will. Ooh. Yeah, actually, I, I watched some, which I never actually see anything that I've ever done, but somebody steered me at it on the internet and Th there it was on youtube dude and they s and there's a lot of stuff on youtube now. dude first 18 episodes of stormwalks I are know. on youtube i know and I we've know. only recorded up to 12 <laughs> which is freaking me out <laughs> that's some pan-dimensional shit going on man i don't know what it is but it's totally weird me out man suddenly the voices are different around episode 13 <laughs> yeah they sound older <laughs> Uh, George of the Jungle, you've done some some stuff for. That's one of my personal favorite shows too. Cause you're on it. Got, well, yeah, well that, and I'm on it. Yeah. Um, I got geez. to play Muldrick. Mm. I think that was his name. Muldrick. He had the greatest jaw ever. <laughs> when in the script it said exert or grunt, it'd be like exert, <laughs> grunt, <laughs> pant, pant, <laughs> breathe. Is that is that inspired by good old Kirk? If you saw the picture, he's got a chin that sticks a foot and a half in front of his face, and it's got a hole in the end. Yes, it was inspired. By of Kirk. course, it's inspired by Kirk. With um, love, not so accurate that I could be sued. Of course, yes, naturally. Uh, lots of stuff: shows and live action and, and animation and video games. Warhammer Forty Thousand, Dawn of War, Dark Crusade. Was just in recording some Dawn of War stuff today. Yeah, cool, cool. Yeah, we just did like... Oh, I don't know if I can say that or not. No, we didn't sign any non-disclosure. No, we? that's not that studio. Oh, yes, that's right. In that case, there's another sequel coming out. It's yeah, going it's to another. be wonderful. It's going to be special because yes. we've got Trevor and I yes. all at the same time. You know, I actually... They gave me a copy of uh, Mark of Chaos, which was the fantasy was one. Did, were you not in that? I was in it. No, you were in it. Yeah, no, because you... Uh, when you download the demo, you're the voice of the guy who's telling you how to yeah. move your men and yeah. things like that. Yeah. And I could not play the game for the longest time. Because every time <laughs> because I load it, it up, I'm like, traumatic. I can't have Scott telling me what the fuck to do. I can't do it. I've had enough of that. <laughs> 
But uh, yeah, it's 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 cool. I uh, they but they gave me a copy of the game. It's which, funny. It's because I'm an great. inveterate gamer, but that one I haven't played yet. You'll get to it. You'll get to it. I'll burn you a copy. <laughs> Whoops. Bioshock. Buy it now. Play it often. You know, this is what they're saying. This Best game. Best voice acting I've ever heard in a video game. Where did they do it? I have mm. no idea. I looked it up. I mean, I was I don't recognize any of the... I think it was probably L.A. Yeah. But just extraordinary acting in it. it like, it makes... I mean, the game itself is like... Wah! I plugged it in Friday night. <laughs> <clears throat> Approximately 17 hours later, Saturday <laughs> afternoon, I went, that's it, it's over? It's that good. Wow. Yeah. Like, not After even... I upgraded my computer and spent like, you know, 600 <laughs> bucks to get my computer compatible so that uh, I could play it. Of course. Well, I'll look for it. I'll look for it. Uh, you are on the Stargate SG-1, it says here. Yeah, did a couple of Stargates. Oh, that, oh yes, there we go. Company of Thieves, Nightwalkers, that's cool. That's live action stuff, so you're well, still... That's live to the television live camera. Live to the TV Which box. means you have to sit around a lot and wear makeup. <laughs> yes, that's why cool. I like cartoons, because we work naked. That's right. Although some of us still like the makeup. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but there's nothing wrong with that. I'll tell you the story afterwards. <laughs> Baraku Ragoon. Baraku Ragoon. Baraku Ragoon. Baraku Ragoon. Baraku Ragoon. Baraku uh, words from deep, 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 deep in the forbidden word, word, word vaults. You go down there with the, you know, the, the asbestos suit and the tongs, pull them out of the liquid nitrogen. <laughs> Is that the sea one? Don't look Don't at it too long! the sea bomb! <laughs> Die! Look at it once! I went blind! <laughs> yeah, I got to play, I got to play this, uh, he was not a nice person, this guy, he was, I don't know, I can't remember what his name was, but Verocchio, he got his, Verocchio, 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 that's Verocchio, it, yeah, he was yes. like, you know, and he was, and he was, yeah, he was always, you know, you fucking Ivan bitches coming here, I'm gonna take you, <laughs> rip you another one, you know. It's a, it's a, it's a show, I think it's gonna be a big fan favorite I think well. it is, it already, it actually, it started airing, and it's doing very well, yeah. it's doing very well, because it's, it's a little more adult in content, I kind of enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, me too, I think it's, it's, it's. So liberating. Well, it's no work. Pokemon, but you yeah, know. This is true. This is true. But hell, is even what Pokemon is, isn't is, Pokemon. Is no Pokemon. Snarl on Transformers Cybertron. Yeah. Not so much. <laughs> I'm extremely <laughs> proud. If you were to ask me what show, what single show or series I'm most proud of, yeah. I would unhesitatingly say Beast Wars. Yes. Which was the best part of the Transformers universe. Yes. And then there was the other three series afterwards, which were not necessarily. <laughs> That's true. However, speaking as one who uh, didn't come to Vancouver until after Beast Wars was over, I Mrs. have to Vancouver disagree with you. Shame. <laughs> uh, wow, where are we here? You did the Godfather video game. Yes, I did. Uh, a lot of folks. I think Mike Dobson uh, did, a, did a bunch of characters. Yeah, because yeah, he talked about that in the second episode. Um, Kong, King of Atlantis. What's that? That was <clears throat> Kong. You know the name of King Kong. Is that a... Is that a series? Yeah, because it well, was we did, a series actually, years we did ago. did it as a series years ago. Yeah, like in 2000, 2001, yeah. right? And then after, not that they were trying to jump on any anybody's bandwagon, but uh, <laughs> suddenly we came back and we did another, uh, uh, we did a straight uh, DVD. Right, right. Imagine that. Imagine that. So it's it's unbelievable. Uh, what, but, have I, what have I got going on? I'm trying to think of stuff now. It's good. Stormhawks is totally cool. Sushi don't. Pack, which is totally yeah, cool. Yeah, you guys just wrapped that like a couple weeks ago. Uh, yes, we did. I play a non-articulating small blob of <laughs> Japanese horseradish who goes by the oh-so-apt name of Wasabi. Uh-huh. It doesn't actually speak. <clears throat> so what is, that, what, what is Wasabi? Which is the greatest gig ever. No kidding. And it's artistically fulfilling. It's artistically fulfilling. Really? And you I mean, have you to can... communicate. It's like being a mind. You've got to get all these very specific <laughs> things. Very specific things. Excited burbling, man. Yeah, say. excited. Well, if you can do excited burbling. We've got all kinds of stuff on here. There's Inuyasha, of course. You were what, Koga on Inuyasha. I was Koga on Inuyasha. For any anime fans out there, I was Duo Maxwell on Gundam Wing. Yes, Lane. that's a huge one. And a pile of different characters on DBZ for 10 yes, years. The original version, not the later to be dubbed in Texas version. Right, so the original one, I've had this sort of running email conversation with some of the fans. The, the basic story is this. Yeah. We recorded the first 52 episodes here in Vancouver. <clears throat> 
the producer decided, hey, let's see if we can find somebody to work even fa- cheaper than Canadians. Mm-hmm. So, boom, he took the series down to America, to a little place called Houston, to, to, Dallas, to Texas. Yeah. So they started recording the thing there from where we left off. In the meanwhile, somehow it all came circling back, so we continued to record under a different name. This was under the Pioneer label. We recorded the whole rest of the series. Ten years we worked on that. Meanwhile, in Texas, they went back and re-recorded the first 52, so there are two completely divergent sets of the same thing Wow. Out there. Wow. I can see you through the pop guard. Hello. <laughs> uh, that sounds uh, far more complicated than it should be. But what are you going to do? Ten years gonna... before the mic on that <coughs> show, though. Yeah, Longest no kidding. Longest time I ever worked on a single ten series years. in my life. Yeah, ten years. Ten that's... years that I won't see again. <laughs> ten years I'll never get back. Damn them. This uh, is one of my favorite ones. Um, and again, not just because we were on it together, but... Crypt of the Superdog, Ignatius and Bathound. The Dark Bob Justice. <laughs> and Ignatius, he was kind of got some curse. Can we cur it or curk it? He was like was Charles the- Nelson Riley, and, <laughs> and it was like every slightly affected character ever done in the history of mankind all rolled into one. Yes, yes. And it, it, it sounded fantastic. He was, was great. Super. Um, Dude, it was another show we worked on together. Uh, yeah, um, Where you got to play an Australian. Of course, of course, X-Men. Don't make me come over there and get all Canadian on your butt, kid. <laughs> that was actually one of my favorite scenes ever, was our big fight scene, where Wolverine and Pyro, uh, I was about to say kick the hell out of each other, but that's not exactly no. how it happened. But, <laughs> yeah, that was, that was, and in fact, that was one of the first times you and I actually really yeah, did. because that was not long after you had uh, shown up in our Fairburg. That's right. That was only just uh, 2001 or yeah. two or something like that, so... Yeah, that was a good one. I, uh, I mean, and you don't get a, a more iconic character than Wolverine. I mean, that was one of the huge. coolest phone calls I ever got. It was <laughs> uh, you booked a thing? You're playing this uh, wolf, 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 and stuff. Wolverine. <laughs> I'm going, I got Wolverine. Because, I mean, that's just like, dude, that's cool before you even start, man. It's just like, oh, you're freaking Wolverine, man. Holy oh, crap. yeah. Bragging rights. I've got to, to get some cool ones. I got to play Flayed Foghorn Leghorn on Baby Looney Tunes. Of course. Of and that course. was just, I was Hermie the Elf. I'm independent. Not if you don't mind my being a dentist in Yukon Cornelius. Right. Not to tell you about Bumbles. Bumbles bounce. In Rudolph and the Island of Misfit Toys, that for me was like, yeah, uh, yeah. Thank God you can't see the judge, Jim. Uh, because you know that stuff that I grew up with. Yeah, you know, and if if there's one voice actor in the world, God rest his soul, Mel Blanc. Good old so Mel, stepping yeah. into those long two-toed, pointy <laughs> chicken feet was, and you know, so you you get to do some pretty cool stuff in this biz. Yeah, no kidding. And you especially. I mean, you out of out of all of us, I think have. Uh, I've hit some of those those big moments. It's those big because I'm moments. so damned old. Yeah, that's right. Uh, right. <clears throat> Dragon Booster, another show that you and I uh, did together. I got to play your whimsical and slightly sycophantic sidekick. <laughs> yes, it was a lovely time for you me. You look very nice today, sir. I'm planning to kill you, you know. <laughs> I was kind of hoping that one would come back, but alas, we did our 40 episodes. You never episodes know. And, Reboot yeah, came yeah, yeah, ba- yeah. back like seven years after we finished. Really? All of a sudden, I got a, ah, oh, you got a booking on Tuesday for a uh, reboot. I'm like, what? What, <laughs> what year is this? How just... long have I been asleep? <laughs> We're going back to the future, boy. <laughs> I am future you. <laughs> Buy Subway. <laughs> Buy shares in Starbucks. <laughs> Microsoft. Ah, uh, wouldn't that be nice? Yes. Oh, yeah, there's so many here. There's so, so many. All the Transformers shows here, X-Men Evolution, Zoids, Barbie of Swan Lake. I'm doing another Barbie, like, tomorrow, dude. Oh, right. Which one? Oh, that's the, uh, that's the, uh, it's another, like, Fairyland Barbie, yeah. right? Yeah. Cool. G.I. Joe, Spy Troops the Movie. Destro. Uh, excuse me? Is that, is I that you? To, I was, uh, in the 80s, I was Freefall Falcon... Falcon, not Falcon. We had a two-day discussion <laughs> about this. Freefall, Falcon, Storm Shadow, Skymate, Overkill. I was Cobra Commander briefly after Chris Latta passed away. Uh, Destro on the new stuff and Gung Ho. Um, what just occurred to me? Oh, dude, coolest thing ever. Mm-hmm. I'm a freaking Care Bear, man. This is a, this. I got an email about this saying, uh, is that Scott playing Grumpy Bear? Faint dangling piddle butts. Listen, you mother... 
I got to <laughs> come in here and open up a big old can of pink doodle and whoop ass on you. <laughs> Lines you will never hear on the actual show. Yes. <laughs> the voice point for Trevor DeVal doesn't know. It does not. Yeah, okay. Uh, but for only forty nine ninety nine, you can get the official outtakes DVD. <laughs> voice actors gone wild. Oh, my God. It goes so that on one I'm kind of proud of. Yeah, I'm that's a, like, again. Dude, that's, I'm a freaking Care Bear, man. That's, you know, that's what I remember growing up. See? Is, uh, the Care Bears. It was, it, it was good. He-Man as well. I'm, and I've done two versions of He-Man. The very first gig I ever did was He-Man and the Man. The New Adventures of He-Man in like 87, <laughs> way back then, wow. 20 years ago. Wow. And then we just, uh, a few years back, did He-Man and the Masters of the Universe again. My very first thing I ever had to do in an audition, my very first audition line was, really, you want me to say this? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> By the power of Grayskull, <laughs> I, I have a you know. <clears throat> It's going well. This is weird. But yeah, then in the new one we did, I was Beast Man, Ram Man, Stratos, Clawful, Cobra Con, and uh, somebody else. Merman. 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 Yes. Right. I wow. even got to use a terrible, terrible Sean Connery in that show. Oh, well. You've got to be able to use that voice That's somewhere. Right. That's uh, the one you know. That and Shatner and Walken. These are the the holy, the triumvirate. There are the three voices you're never allowed to do. I walked into the studio <coughs> once at Old Pinewood Studios. Ah, uh, God rest its soul. Uh, the greatest studio of them all, because it had a fireplace <laughs> with real wood. <laughs> but I walk into the control room and I hear this, oh my God, and I'm going, wow, that's a freaking good Charlton High. It's nice to meet you, Mr. Heston, sir. It's when I he was played, up here for the Ten Commandments. I right. played Jesus to his to his his Moses. Wow! No, to no. his <laughs> to, to Ben. Her. The Ten Commandments I did as well. I played Pharaoh in that, and he recorded that in L.A. But then we did Ben Hur, right? And I played right. I played Jesus to his to Ben Hur. Oh, well. And you meet him, and say, it was right around Easter. You know, I'm like, wow, you're freaking Charles <laughs> Nasty, man. <laughs> Don't shoot, please. And I get home, and I turn on the TV, and it's like, let my people, because <laughs> he was on. <laughs> Hey, people, go. Oh, my God. Who were you on Reboot way back when? Reboot? I was, I was, I am proud to say that I was hack. <laughs> <laughs> I was hack. I was, um, I was Mr. Andrew. I was, I was like this Ross getting Bynum, dude. He was cool. And Spicky, Spicky Bynum. Serious ma'am, sir. <laughs> and I was Fax Modem in the X-Files episode that we did, which was kind of cool. Oh. Because, like, Julian Anderson came in and played herself. Yeah, and uh, it uh, it decided he didn't want to do the show, so <laughs> I walked in. They went, "Oh, can you do?" It? And I went, "I don't know. I've never watched the X." And they went, <gasps> and so they played me something, and I went, "How do you do him?" <laughs> so I just kind of did him like that. The aliens came and took my my sister. Exactly. It was, like it was all in the eyes, dear boy. It was all in the eyes. <laughs> exactly. Scully, why don't you believe me anymore? But people still why remember that. They're like, that was me. you. Holy crap. That was like the best show oh, ever. Hilarious. So many. It just, the list goes on and on and on. And they're. Uh, I'll figure Beast about, Wars, I'll figure about 8,500 about. episodes in the all, all years. Told, all yeah, told, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I mean, this pack of, about this the sack of paper of that I have were... is just, it's weighing me down, man. There's too much. And that's not complete, dear boy. Yes, I know. Oh, I'm I very familiar. I don't know familiar. where they get their information, but... Mm. <laughs> Every now and then I look, I'm, I'm like, very wait a minute, I recorded that 15 seconds ago. Yeah. <laughs> I just got another studio. What? It's here. Anyway, it goes on and on and on. It's unbelievable. But, you know, it, it, what's important is that the fans know more about this than than I do. So I'm not going to... Uh, that's it. That's done. It. No Your career that. is done. It's finished. You're finished. We've had enough. Town. But uh, what are you working on currently that you can speak of? We talked about <laughs> Stormhawks. We talked about Care, Care Bears. Bears. Uh, uh, we just finished Johnny Test. Yes, Warner, Johnny Test. The third Tess. season of Johnny Test for Warner Brothers. I think it's WB. I hope <laughs> you can edit this in the afterwards, yes, right? Yes. When you take it all after I get the words. call from the lawyers, yes. yes. <laughs> Suddenly, the ninja rope SWAT team. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else am I working on? Uh, the uh, the uh, the Black Lagoon, Black Lagoon, uh, another and one called Death Note, of course. No, I'm not actually. You're on not on Death Note. Note. I won't do Death Note, darling. Oh, well. I don't like the little thingies. Yeah. I don't. You don't even do the show. I know. You're like the anti Vic. He was uh, desperate to get on that show. He oh, was. I know. He really. Oh, I would have liked to have done it. I just didn't get hired on it. Truth be told. <laughs> wow, weird. Uh, um, what else am I working on? When we covered a bunch of it, uh, it, it always comes to me afterwards. As soon as we've wrapped, I'm like, oh shoot, yeah. wait. 
I that's mean, my pro- that's all that's my problem. in the next Star too. Wars movie. I forgot to mention <laughs> it. Damn. I'm playing Hayden Christensen's career. <laughs> Oh, I, I'm, I'm so too hard many, on him. Too many, you can't, I know, there's straight I lines. know, I know. I just, I can't help it. <laughs> anyway, listen, uh, it's... Yes? That was my Hayden Christian impression. Ah. <laughs> he's, he's just arching his eyebrow. I'm arching and... my eyebrow in a very <laughs> intense doing? way. And uh, here comes the next round of Ninja Lawyers. <laughs> we uh, are incredibly warm here in the studio, so we're going to take a little tiny break and be right back with Voice Brit. Uh, don't go away, kids. We'll Stick see you around. Second. We'll be right back after these exciting messages. We interrupt this eargasmic cornucopia of pure audio wind to shamelessly promote another podcast. No! No! The Big Ball Broadcast. But what makes it big and bold? The Big Ball Broadcast brings you news on all things geeky, movies, gadgets, games, cartoons, and anime, and other random fandom. You're fired. I'm fired. Get out of the booth, Jack. No, I like it in here. But what makes it big and bold? It's hosted by big, bald anime and video game voice actor Kyle Hebert and his co-host, musician and upcoming author, Otherworld Steve. Oh, you must smell like feet wrapped in leathery burnt bacon. Subscribe via iTunes or visit thebigballbroadcast.blogspot.com. Hello, I'm Weston Biggerstaff, famous actor and star of hit nature series, Tooth and Claw. You know me from my many film roles, including Japs Ahoy, Captain Swashbuckle and his Merry Brigadiers, and Nutballs 4, Farty's Revenge. I would like to take a moment to highlight the plight of the elephants. As you are no doubt well aware, every year millions of elephants are poached for their ivory. But did you know that just as many elephants are also killed for their prized penises, which are later dried out, ground up, and sold in Chinatown as an impotent remedy? Fact! Chinamen need their erections! Problem! No more elephant penises equals no more elephants. Solution! You! Donate to the Western Beggarstaff Elephant Breeding Farm, a safe haven where only a small portion of captive elephants will have their penises chopped off and sold to the Chinese. This will ensure future generations of elephants and their penises for the Chinese. It's the only sane option. And just so I'm not being racist to the elephants, they are chosen on a strict eeny meeny miny mo system. Random and fair. Do the right thing and help me build a sustainable elephant penis industry. Visit www.redintoothandclaw.com to learn more about this important threat facing all elephants. While there, you can also view episodes of Tooth and Claw, read my own animal fun facts, or check out my blog, The Blogger Staff. The Western Bigger Staff Elephant Breeding Farm. It's good for the elephants, and it's good for the Chinese. And the circle of life continues. You're listening to Voice Print with Trevor Duvall and guests. And we're back with Scott McNeil. I just want to say that uh, that uh, the, the plug for Western Bigger Staff's show there, that, yeah, that's, uh, the, the, the members and, and producers of Voice Print do not necessarily endorse any views he may have. The views you have heard on the show are not necessarily indicative of the management or our lawyer's staff. <laughs> our lawyers have told us to say this, and they're holding us at gunpoint. They've just come in through the ceiling on ropes dressed as ninjas. <laughs> Um, uh, you've had a long, long, long career. Many, what, 20... 20 years 20 almost 20 years now. now. Yeah. That's it's unbelievable. The, microphone, man and boy. <clears throat> the, 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 the questions you must get as to your favorite moments. I mean, there must be a, a bazillion interesting, memorable things. I mean, a lot of the times people will ask that and they'll be like, well, you know, what was funny? What's the funny moment? There must have been lots of those. But what were some of your most memorable moments or if one... Pops to mind. In the studio? Yeah, in the studio. Hmm. Yeah, in the studio, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, because it's often so serious, as you well know, (laughs) Trevor. Many times we'll stop just to think and ponder the 
incredible imponderabilities of life. To think deeply upon and reflect. I don't know. It's mostly funny stuff. It's mostly about farting and burping <laughs> and puking. Yes, and those stories have been told. We, we of course, have, have, have already covered, covered all the, the farting and puking Yes, pretty stories. much the Gary Chalk story, the uh, the little after Wolverine's big... Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, that was, that was Brad <laughs> who told that one, actually. Uh, last uh, last time. Um, so besides the toilet humor, I was the first person ever to die in a network television series cartoon. Really? To actually dead die. Really? Yeah, that was on GI <clears throat> Joe. They and this actually... was back when you know. I mean, even if you know you were doing anime and you know the character was you know bisected, trisected, drawn, quartered, yeah. put through a pulverizer, meat ground, reconstituted, vaporized by aliens. You always had to put in a little. <clears throat> At the very I'm okay. end. <laughs> but uh, I played a character, this drug dealer named the Headman on G.I. Joe, and it was like this four-part arc, and at the end, he had dies of an overdose of his own product, Spark. And wow. they show his dead hand, and they just come in and go, drugs kill. Well, see, it's okay. Now they're slop, you know, they're, they're picking us off like, well, <laughs> like like elephant penis hunters out there. It's terrible. <laughs> That always bugged me. That this whole idea that in cartoons, no matter what the show is about, no matter I'm what the dead. yeah, I'm not. I'm feeling I'm better. Much better now. It's. I mean, it's the word is destroyed. You must destroy, uh, especially in anime. Yeah, it makes me a little crazy. The god of death is back from. Okay, we need one for the network now. <laughs> the great destroyer is back from <laughs> lunch in this really warm place where I got this great tan. What was it? It was on Dragon Ball Z. We went. To, we we went to hell. And there's these two demons that work in hell, and their t-shirts say hell. <laughs> they had to go in and digitally change every frame so that they said Heffel. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. Yep. Wow, I, oh. And then there's Black Lagoon. And thank then, God thank God, God there's Black Lagoon for fuck's sake. I'm gonna take that <laughs> fucking Ivan bitch, and I'm gonna rip her a new fucking slit right now. And you can fucking tell her that from me. Mommy, what does fucking slit mean? <laughs> Well, remember when you walked in on your daddy and me that time? Oh, and we were yeah. playing wheelbarrow? Oh, well, <laughs> I tried that with the dog, but he met me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, you've worked with uh, uh, some, obviously, all of the, the, the top-notch dudes here in town. We've all worked with the top-notch dudes in town. That's, that's, what nice, that's what's nice about uh, being in Vancouver. It's yes. a very small group, and everybody works together. It's nice. But There's only really two of us. Really? Yeah, I know. I know. You and Sam. Yeah. Trevor, that's not true. That's not true. I was putting oh, you in that group. Uh, but you, you worked with Charlton Heston on this thing. Yeah. That's a big thing. That was pretty trippy. That's a big thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I kind of covered a few of the uh, the memorable moments, yeah. if you will. Yeah. You know, just going in and going, he's shorter than you would think. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, man. Don't bring up guns around uh, Charlton. Yeah, no. No, kidding, but he's no, he's a good fella and stuff. Don't get me wrong, because he's freaking Charlton Heston, yeah. man. But you don't bring up the whole <laughs> NRA thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, regardless of what you think, though, he's still freaking Charlton Heston. Yeah. Like I said, that night I turned on the TV and there he was parting the Red Sea. Yeah, exactly. Like, well, yeah. How do you uh, talk to a man who has that kind of power? That's right. You don't piss it him off. Um, Not if you ever want to bathe again. You mentioned uh, you mentioned that Beast Wars was was something sort of clear yeah. to your heart. Out of all the characters you've done, what are what are some characters that that hit that like? Well, in the, the, top? the four characters from Beast Wars: Dinobot, Rat Trap, Waspinator, and Silverbolt. I mean, I can run through that litany, but I've, it's it's all over YouTube. <laughs> Insolent vermin! <laughs> <laughs> Waspinator has me. Yeah, well, I like to see you and Silverbolt. There, that was the condensed version. <laughs> but Thank they were they were extraordinarily digest. written characters. For a North American, you can't see the air quotes. Yes, but a North American show, where you know usually you've got twenty-two minutes to save the world and sell some goddamn toys. <laughs> but this one, I mean, it had like a three-year story arc, and uh, you know, they, they, like it was the only show I've ever done that I actually used to watch because I just went, right. "You are thirsty, man! <laughs> I gotta watch my show." <laughs> I taped them all <laughs> because it didn't. You know, you could completely disassociate from having done it. The writing was so extraordinary. The the animation for its time was like what. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, I got caught up in it, you know, and and that was actually, you know, when Dinobot died. Hmm. The very first convention I ever went to was in 1998, and it was just after that episode had aired. And I've been doing this for 10 years, you know. And then you go into people like, oh my God, when Dinobot died, part of me died with it. I'm like, whoa. 
people watch this stuff. <laughs> they live. But this yeah, stuff. I mean, he had this, you know, this incredible sort of five episode arc towards his own demise. And, you know, we were paraphrasing, you know, I finished with the whole to be or not to be. Not to be. You know, in this whole, you know, wow. he knew he was going to die five episodes before I did. Right. I'm clueless. It's like, <laughs> and the rest is. Silence. Okay, when do I come back? Oh, you don't, Scott. You're dead. <laughs> yeah, like cartoon dead, right? Oh, no, man, you're dead. Well, I don't. Dead. <laughs> don't well, you when mean do I <laughs> I'm like, don't I come back a little? I need, I gotta pay my mortgage, man. Yeah. That uh, was actually, I mean, it was a pretty cool moment because, you know, it, cartoons are usually, you know, it's either lots of action or lots of comedy. Right. And this had a bit of both. And it really did have, you know, a very intricately... Intiquitly? Intiquitly. Had a very, had a very intiquitly uh, interwoven, if you could see what these eyes have seen. <laughs> interwoven storyline. So it was, that one was a real pleasure to work on just for the experience of itself. I mean, I was working with an amazing cast on that show. I mean, that right. was Dave Kay and Gary and right. Alec Willows, who was so creepy. <laughs> I felt unclean sitting next to him. <laughs> and Venus. <laughs> <laughs> She's so beautiful. She is, really, she is. Um, yeah, there, it was an. Ex- oh, God, I know. Uh, Corlett, Ian Corlett was uh, on that. Jim Burns was in. It, you know, it really was. It was. It was a stellar cast and lots of. You know, and it was just fun. Fun, fun, fun. Directed by Sue Blue, my favorite director. And that was a prelay. That was. Yeah. Uh... Oh yeah. Oh, that was cool. CGI 3D. <clears throat> right. It's like the second of its kind. It was done by you know reboot was the first and then mainframe did the. It's real. Like you should check it out, man. Yeah. Like I'll watch it every now and then and go, wow. It still holds up. It still eh? holds up. Today. It's still good. It's, it's still the most popular. You know, I'm going to go to conventions now, you know, purely anime conventions. And that was 12 years ago we started Beast Wars. Right. And people are still like, oh my God. Well, <laughs> even when, you know, uh, I did that panel with yeah. you in, in Burnaby, that was, it's a huge show that yeah. keeps coming up. So it does. Lasting power. That's cool. It is indeed. <clears throat> lasting it's power. Lasting like, like the burger I had for dinner. Oh, it's sitting there like a rock in it my gives belly. me the rim. <clears throat> Tell me something. How is it? You, yes. Scott McNeil, how is it that you Me? got into this business in the first place? I was a lucky man. I was, I studied in the, the, the academy for the dramas, and I learned the Shakespeare, and I learned the Ibsen and the Moliers, and I was going to be this great Shakespearean actor, and, uh, and then blow them away with the majesty of my boy's voice and bring culture and education to the masses. I was largely unemployed for a long time. <laughs> but uh, you, you know, studied at Studio 58, yeah, and yeah. you actually went and took the, the three year. I was kicked out and told program. I would never make it as an actor. Wow. And they were right, because, I mean, let's face it, you <laughs> Yeah, this cartoons. isn't really acting. <laughs> I was extremely well received in this year's Vancouver International Film Festival. I'll have you know, Trevor Duval. Do tell. And I did a movie called The Green Chain Uh about the Canadian logging industry. And the movie opens up with, this was terrifying for me, Mm. because it opens up, it's shot documentary style, one camera setup, 15 minute monologue, me playing a human being. Just, just a, a regular guy. And I did it at a logging camp with a bunch of loggers all sitting there drinking beer and going, let's hear watch this here. And they went, wow. I, I saw, I, I'd never seen myself, but I was brought down to the film festival to watch it. And, it, you know, that kind of thing, there's no room for acting. And so I really yeah, yeah. had to be, is me. And it worked remarkably well. I was like, like <laughs> surprise, going, hey, surprise, I gotta surprise. I got to learn how to do that. <laughs> but, um, you know, so that, that was kind of a challenge in and of itself because I tend to be a little theatrical. Yeah. So you couldn't hide behind anything, and especially documentary style. There was no cut, 15 minutes, just straight. Right, just so you just got to about... hit it the first time, and he yeah. is real and natural. Yeah, and it, and it worked I, too, am well. terrified of that kind of thing. I suffer from the same sort of thing, this this hiding behind the theatrical exactly. things. and. Yeah, that's well. That's all. what's the what's the show called? It's called the Green Chain. The Green Chain, and that was at the Vancouver Film Festival. Yeah, and it was actually uh, Jill, uh, Jillian Fargi who plays my wife in the last monologue. It's a series of seven monologues. She was just singled out as like best <coughs> performance ever. Right, best show, best, best actor <laughs> ever. <laughs> but um, uh, the, the answer, uh, you know, I, I've used this answer before, but it's very, you know, I, I'm doing for a living what I used to get kicked out of school for, you know, <laughs> literally. Right. You know, I've done goofiness ever since I was, is, 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 is me how to, you know, even back in the old days, back in Australia. <laughs> Brisbane? Uh, Brisbane, a land far, far away, and a land far, far away, the land where everything's a question, <laughs> no matter what it is. 
It's like, what's wrong with you people? <laughs> really interrogative sort of line. Line. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I literally have always done voice voices. You know, they, they channel out of me. The, the <clears> moment <throat> that I realized that it was, pl- I, was in, I was obsessed with Disneyland when I was 12 years old. Mm-hmm. Pirates of the Caribbean, Haunted Mansion. So I finally managed to cajole my family into taking me there. And when I found out that Paul Fries, the voice you hear, you know, Welcome, foolish mortals, was the same voice that was the, he was the Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> and I went, Bing! <laughs> Something changed. I'm not alone. <laughs> but then I, I, I almost stumbled into it. You know, I had been bumbling around as an unemployed actor for a while, and I, I ran into Doug Parker, who was... And because uh, I went, you know what? This I'd done a radio play that it, it, most people have heard the story, so I'll do it real fast. <laughs> and if you slow that down on your playback, you'll get the complete thing. Satan, Satan. I went in for a commercial because I said, you know what? Find out if I can do some stuff. I went in for a radio commercial with him. He went, you know, oh, I wish I'd met you a week ago. I was like, oh, uh, why? And he goes, because I just finished doing some casting on GI Joe. And I'm like, yeah, right. Like what? The cartoon? And he went, yeah. <laughs> so I went in for uh, a show called. Beep boop. It was directed by a sociopath named Beep Boop <laughs> from the States. It was so traumatic, I went, I will never do that again. I will never go into a studio again with these people. So it almost They're scared insane. you off entirely. It really did. Uh, I turned down the next one, and then I went in for the new Adventures of He-Man, and I booked it, and that was 65 episodes, and now you it's know, 20 years later, later yeah. and I'm, I'm sitting in a closet. <laughs> I made it, Ma! <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, it's the best I can do. It's like the Tom Cruise come out of the closet episode. <laughs> oh, that was gold. Gold. Solid gold, Jerry. It's funny because people have said when, when I started doing conventions, which was only a couple of years ago, I'm still new to the fan base, as it were. I'm still new. I mean, certainly compared to you, I've only been at this seven years, but uh, only in the last four, really, have I started to sort of become a little more prominent. Yeah. But... Um, when I started to do the conventions and people would ask me that question, well, how did you get into this? And I would tell the story and they're like, oh, it's just like Scott. So I've been wanting to ask you this question. For it's not uncommon. Time. I mean, people come in generally from three different ways, right? There's some people that come in from broadcast. Yeah. And they're fine actors in their own right. On the next exciting episode. Hello, Jim. Hello. Can you hear me now? <laughs> I don't mean to disparage. <laughs> I really do. Everyone has their place here. That's right. We're and I can't do the stuff they family. can do. There you go. Um, people tend to come in. A few people drift in from radio. Uh, a lot of people come in from stand-up. And then, you know, there's sort of the rest of us that, that <laughs> wasted all those years studying acting. <laughs> the great unwashed. Yes. The misfits of the theatrical world. You know, who are just a little too strange to do film and television, I suppose. <laughs> do you find that... Uh, um, a lot of uh, our colleagues still do on-camera stuff or not so much? Because I I don't really think there's a lot of people that do um, that, do There they? are a few. Like, Gary does a lot. I've done... I mean, you know, I've starred in a couple of very forgettable films, and I've done kind of some of the requisite, but there is this kind of stigma mm. amongst the casting persona in this fair city of yeah. ours. Here in Gotham. <laughs> you know, oh, no, he does cartoons. He's, he's theatrical <laughs> and weird. We want, you know, it's all in the eyes. <clears throat> oh, yeah, yeah. Who's yeah. that David Duchovny guy? Let's bring him back. Mulder, I found this in the alley. Cut! Oh, for Christ's sake, you kill him! <laughs> You're chewing up the scenery! Hey, Mulder, I found this in the alley. What are you trying to do? I'll just think the line. Perfect! <laughs> Cut him. <laughs> just keep it on David, it'll be great. <laughs> Oh, exactly. exactly. So you've always got to kind of cut against it. <laughs> you know, the Avengers comes in. I did, you know, I was Scooby Doo too. I did, but <clears> right. that was because it was, you know, freaky and prosthetic and this grandiose. You know, when they need something like that, they're always kind of freaked out. It's yeah. like, oh my god, this guy's like amazing. <laughs> Why? Well, Twenty years now, I've been working on camera, and every time I work, it's like, oh my god, this guy's. Where did he come from? <laughs> <laughs> I've been here for a while. <laughs> The Stargate, the last one I did, they were like, oh my god, wow, uh, we're going to bring a recurrent character, we're going to... Two weeks later, I pick up the paper, Stargate SG-1, cancel! (laughs) Fuck! (laughs) Yeah, well, hey, you know what happened to me on on, uh, Atlantis? I was playing... I'm sorry, am I the guest or are you the Uh, guest? No! Trevor, hey, you know what, Uh, I heard a little story about you on Stargate Atlantis, maybe you want to share that with the viewers right now. Not anymore. Shut up, I'll do it on my own episode. No, come on, do it, I want to hear Trevor DeVal and guest Trevor DeVal. I'll do it on that show, it'll be three hours long. Yeah, you only got on the show because you slept with the 
the, the host. I want to hear the story. And I was awesome. <laughs> What happened? I was playing my little alien, dude. I was the voice of all the little oh, okay. alien, the little guys, right? I did that on Outer Limits. I did a thing like that. Yeah. yeah. It was awesome. It was a re- I was a recurring guy. I was yeah. like one of the regular guys on the ship. I was a big helmsman. So I had all these episodes. It was great. I went in, and then all of a sudden they stopped calling. I thought, oh, did, was I maybe replaced or something? But Kirby, who was playing the helmsman on that ship, yeah. which would show up every few episodes, also hadn't been called. So we were like, what's going on? And as it turns out, Apparently, uh, Mitch Pelegi, who played the captain of that ship, was offered his own show halfway through the shooting of Atlantis, and so he had to leave. And how they decided to get him to leave, or how they wrote that into the story was... They blew up the ship! They pretty much blew up the ship <laughs> and committed genocide nice. on my alien race. Your whole race. The whole race. So how's that for fired? <laughs> There's a great disturbance in the force. <laughs> It's like a thousand little Trevor Val alien voices yes. crying out crying and suddenly out unemployed. <laughs> anyway, that sucked. <laughs> yeah, welcome to showbiz, kids. So you want to be in a- welcome to so you want to be an actor with a couple of bitter old ass babes. And Christ that, sake, give me another scotch. That is a perfect segue into our advice column. So <laughs> we get asked all the time by oh so many fans. Mm-hmm. How, as a regular guy, as a regular girl, as a regular person who desperately wants to be in cartoons, you know, want to be in cartoons, uh-huh. how? You got a great face for radio, kid. <laughs> That's what my mom told me. I but, tell you this right now if you're a regular guy or a regular gal, you got no baby doing <laughs> cartoons. It's <laughs> a peculiar world. True enough. Now, I know you've been asked that a million times. If you I had know. some advice for, for people uh, trying to get in as actors, what, what would that um, be? I'll give you a little of my Reader's Digest synopsis of this. There's two words at play, and this is a visual, kids. Close your eyes. Imagine the left hand going up as I say voice, and the right hand going up as I say actor. It's a two-part word. Voice actor. If you put that on a scale, (laughs) actor is by far the most important part. By far. I meet a lot of people that can do voices. You know, I really do, and, you know, some better than others. Some who can't. But some that really can. I'm like, yeah, that's very impressive. You've got an incredible list of voices. Can you act? Oh, uh, I don't know. Or you never work. Or you might work briefly. Yeah. Um, you know, the example I use a lot is Mel Blanc never once created a voice. He always created a character. Right, exactly. You know, these were fully fleshed out, completely realized and actualized characters. It's so important. I hear stuff sometimes where, you know, oh, somebody's created a voice. And it's like, no, dude, that's not the freaking voice that matters. The voice is secondary. You know, it's got to be a character. So if you don't know your chops around your acting, I know people are often shocked if they come in and watch how physical it is in the studio. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll use it again. I mean, a show like Beast Wars, when I was shooting back and forth because we ran it all one take, you know, people would watch and go, you're a freak. Because, you know, you don't just shift gears vocally. You yeah. have to change everything. Yeah. I would go and change my underwear. <laughs> and you would have special to. special rat trap underpants. <laughs> Bring my lucky underpants. <laughs> but, um, so I stress that. I mean, I really do. Workshops, you know, blah, blah, blah. Oh, oh, oh. Everything you can do to get your chops together. Vocally, you don't necessarily have to be Mr. Vocal Acrobatic. You know, I mean, the one thing I've never been asked to play in my life is just use your own voice, mm-hmm. whatever that is. And I'm like, dude, there's other people that do my voice way better than me. <laughs> um, you know, whereas, you know, so my little sort of, you know, non-niche niche is because I have a certain amount of versatility and it's like, oh, we need this. Okay. We need that. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, like uh, Kirby's a good example. Of this. I mean, Kirby has tremendous range, but not a lot of people know it because mm-hmm. Kirby has this beautiful, heroic sounding, young sort of mid-20s ingenue, yeah. ingenue voice. But <clears throat> Kirby is an extraordinarily good actor. Mm-hmm. That's why Kirby works a lot. A lot. Well, except he's out of town now, so if anyone sounds like <laughs> Kirby Morrow, send your tapes and demos into the Trevor Um Because we're not above stealing his work. <laughs> You know, so, and there are people like that, you know, it just, you know, and it's not because of a particular vocal quality. It's just, you know, the, the acting is extraordinary. 
you know, you've got the chops to back up the character. And if you do that, the voice doesn't matter. You know, it, it all becomes very real in the performance. And it's the same for, you know, Nutball Like Me. Or like, you know, it's, it, it, no matter how goofy and strange it is, it still has to be, I hate to use the term real, but it has to be based in some, po- it has to be believable. Yeah. You know, and whatever that, that person's mania is, it has to come from a real place. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've said the same thing <clears throat> to countless classes and countless students. That yeah. very thing about how the most important word in the phrase voice acting is acting, not the voice. I said it first. <clears throat> well, actually, I said it first on this show, so that's the only <laughs> It's like stand-up of comics. People. <laughs> Whoever gets it on Leno gets it. It's his. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it is. I know I stole it yesterday, but I was going on the frickin' Tonight Show. Now it's mine, bitch. What are you gonna do about it now, Dukerman? <laughs> well, it's very sound advice. I think it's very sound advice, and so all you kids out there trying to get into the business, listen to Mister Scott McNeil. He knows. There's also cool stuff because you're just getting about. used to, you know, being on microphone. I always recommend, you know, you, any city that you're in. Um, you know, lot, almost all places have like books, books for the blind or reading right. newspapers for the blind. If you right. get in touch with, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's CNBC up here, but wherever, um, you know, yeah. services like that, that just get you into a studio, get you working, you know, because I mean, there's the technical aspect of it as well. Absolutely. Um, both Trevor and I teach workshops, which That's are exorbitantly right. expensive, <laughs> but we'll you come pick you up it. on our private jet. <laughs> For a beautiful, fun-filled vacation in luxurious Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. The Riviera of Canada. <laughs> no, no, we won't. No. Sorry. Because it rains a lot. <laughs> it's, it's That's why we spend so much too. time inside our own minds. <laughs> That's right. The one place. That's where we the other thing, wet. too. I mean, you know, just geographically, like, you know, I may meet somebody in, in Nebraska who I think has a lot of talent, but. You know, there's always, I mean, radio stuff. There, there's different aspect, aspects of voice acting. Yeah. You know, there's, you know, radio, television. But most people specifically seem to now want to get into, or at least the people that would be, pardon me, listening to this, would want to get into cartoons. Right. But there is a whole other spectrum. Yeah. I mean, the Both commercial of, world know, we, is huge here yeah. as well. And, but you know, if you happen stuff. to be in Nebraska and you want to do anime dubbing, or you want to do prelay voiceover, no. Pretty much what it comes down to. You have to be where the work is. Because believe it or not, they don't fly in. <laughs> they just don't. Yeah, exactly. Um, as I said, very good advice. Very, very, very useful, very helpful, Mr. McDaniel. Thank you. Uh, let's uh, see what's in the mailbag. Martin's Mailbag. <laughs> just not the same without the sheep have to have the sheep you can't say that to an australian <laughs> first off in the mailbag uh the advertising for the movie martian child has begun and david k is reported to be in the movie and i can i think confirm that i think he told me about that like last year uh the debut was around november 2nd um Here's where you can hear Scott McNeil, for now anyway, uh, or at the moment, uh, on Teletoon as various characters on Class of the Titans and Johnny Test, and on YTV... George the Jungle. And George the Jungle. Uh, on YTV as Hohenheim Elric on Full Metal Alchemist, Stork on Stormhawks, Snarl on Transformer Cybertron, and Scary Godmother and Scary Godmother 2. I wasn't actually <clears throat> the Scary Godmother. Yes, I knew, I knew. I've got that Hi, here. I'm the really terrifying Godmother. <laughs> My name is Wendell. You can call me Vivian. <laughs> that's, that's Although the character the... I was playing was, it was he was yeah yeah he was the skeleton in the closet. <laughs> oh, scary Godmother! I think it's time we came out of the closet. <laughs> and of course, Max. That'll that'll be on YTV's Halloween uh, programming, um, and also as various characters on Being Ian and Team Galaxy and Le Quatre Fantastique, Le Quatre Fantastique. Fantastic Four. Uh, these are the tentative times for the Scary Godmother specials scheduled to air on YTV this Halloween. Uh, we've got them at Friday, October the twenty sixth at four p.m. That's both Eastern and Pacific. And Saturday, October the 27th at 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Again, Eastern and Pacific. This is your chance to hear Tabitha St. Germain as the Scary Godmother, Gary Chuck as Harry the Werewolf and Bugaboo, and the lovely and talented Scott McNeil as Count Max and Pettibone. Um, <clears throat> Martin writes in that based on the live-action X-Men movies, uh, one Vancouver voice actor did appear in the final cut, Brenna O'Brien, who was Rin, 
on Inuyasha. But on an ironic note, Brenna did not do any of the X-Men Evolution voices. And on an even more ironic note, the voice of Wolverine, played by Scott McNeil, was nowhere to be found in the live action, and that's just dumb. The Isn't quote it dumb? was, not with a ten-foot pole. They wouldn't touch anybody from the show. Dave Kay is the only buddy I know from the show that got an audition. Really? I like to think it's because they were intimidated. <sighs> oh, well, what else could it be? Because I'm thinking, wait a minute, Wolverine's short and stocky. I'm short and stocky. He rides a bike. I ride a bike. He's, most, I smoke. He's Canadian. I'm Canadian. You want to cast an Australian? I'm also Australian. And here we go, Hollywood. <gasps> I sound just like the guy in the cartoon. <laughs> Hugh Jackman was great, but he's too tall. Yeah, he's also gay. So there's that. Well, there is that. Yeah. But, uh, but he's married and has children. Well, then that's got to be wrong. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're going to tell me Rin Tin Tin was a junkie. <laughs> he wasn't? With the uh, large number of roles Scott has voiced over the years, maybe we should try a little game. Here's oh, a little game for Martin. There we go. Let's see if Scott can name the show after each set of characters he's done. Well, this one is obvious. We've already been through it. Rat Trap, Silver Boat, Dinobot, Waspinator. Eh, oh, oh, what is Beast Wars? What is Beast Wars is correct. <sighs> Uh, Piccolo, Dabur. Yeah, this is obvious. Piccolo. As soon as we Piccolo, can I call in a lifeline? <laughs> uh, Duo Maxwell. Get the wing. Koga. <laughs> Flipshot. The new adventures of He Man. Cobra Khan, Stratos, Beast Man, Claw Man, Merman, Ram Man. The further and extenuating random <laughs> continuation of the old adventures of the new adventures of He-Man, better known as He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Now th that was that was the obvious set. Now here's the least. Well, that was that the was the introduction round. That's right. So Suezo and Grey Wolf, Monster Rancher. There we go. Rathamon. Conan the Adventurer. What year was that? That was uh, <clears throat> that was back in the last millennia. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun now because you can say that was back in art yeah, four. It was four. I mean, uh, that was the first significant bad guy because every other villain I'd ever, you know, I'd always been like, not by J boys. What are we gonna do? <laughs> Rathamon was the first time I got a chance to rumble. Ah, oh. bring me this blacksmith. The first time I got to do a real. <laughs> 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 oh, I love those characters. Oh, doesn't it just get you hot? Doesn't it get you hot? Uh, time to die, fly. The wacky world of Tex Avery, where uh -huh. I played an 80 year old woman. <laughs> time to die, fly. That's what we philanthropists do, you know. <laughs> Hack and Specky. That'd be a reboot. A reboot. Owen Heim Elric, we know, is a full metal alchemist. alchemist. Uh, Atlas. That was cool, because I got to fly down to Texas to record yes, that show. Yes, that's right, that's right. Atlas would, in fact, be your class on the Titans. The Titans. Atlas has never come back as a character, and you know why? Why? Did, was he destroyed? He was not destroyed. <laughs> there was a horrible explosion in space. <laughs> I don't know what it meant, but he was just cruising past. He's holding up the planet. Boom! They animated him with a bunch of chest hair. Yeah. And it was too expensive to animate the chest hair. I swear to God. That is straight from the horse's mouth on now. Oh, they gold. Went, it's too expensive to to animate your man chest. Oh, you heard it first here on Voice Print with Trevor DeVal, kids. Oh, the gold. <laughs> uh, bone Steel. That'd be your live-action Ninja Turtles show. I put myself out on that show because I spent seven weeks with one eye kicked over to the side doing a whole lot of twitching. <laughs> Very first day in on set in the studio, I was like, hey, uh, oh. They had to bring in a chiropractor. Oh. It was bad, and I had a seven-week migraine. Plus, I was recording. That was the busiest time of my life. Yeah. I was in studio six days a week, nine o'clock in the morning, generally to about 4.30 in the afternoon. Yeah. Six o'clock, I would be on set. I would work through to eight o'clock in the morning. I would go back to the studio. I did that for seven weeks straight. So no sleep at all. It was weird. You know, you sit there on the Thursday, you're going, oh my God, it's totally amazing. I haven't slept in like a week and a half, and I feel so... <laughs> <laughs> but cha-ching. Yeah, no kidding. That was a good cha summer, man. No that was 1997. Uh, Cobra Commander is obviously... Oh, Jay that's Joe? from... Oh, God. That's, that's from My from Little Pony. Right, yeah, right. Uh, Dead Eye Duck. Dead Eye Duck was from Bucky O'Hare and the Toad Wars, which is another show that I'm kind of proud of. Yeah, we, we did a lot 13 of guys episodes. It's still there's still like sites dedicated to it. We were supposed to do another 52. It was really good, and it uh, it was one of those you know oh, they're going to be starting them again uh, in January, and then in March, and then you start to go. 
and then it's 20 years later. I'm still waiting. <laughs> it could happen. Uh, Wolverine is obvious. Um, I think that was My Little Pony. Priscilla, Queen Priscilla of the, the Queen. Desert. Yes. I think that was, yeah. Um, <clears throat> Agent at? White. That would be Johnny Test. Johnny Test. Agent White, who, by the way, isn't white. Oh, but what is he? He's... There's two agents. There's Agent Black and White. Oh, and I'm the black guy whose oh, name see. is White. Oh, that's um. They're just confusing ya with <laughs> they that are. stuff there. Proto Man and Doctor Wily. That would be Mega Man. Yes, that was a good one. Our plans will take off as a vote. Back when all true mad scientists were fully German. <laughs> yes, exactly. Actualized as Germans. <laughs> Um, uh, Principal Kuno. Ah, uh, that was Ronma one half. Oh, there we go. That was an eight-year show, though. Yes. I, I think I was right on the very tail end of that, but that was right before my time. Uh, I'm going to pronounce this wrong. Jajuka? You pronounced it exactly right. Oh, so is Iskuflonir. Mr. Yoshi. Oh, that'd be your, uh, <laughs> Hamtaro with those <laughs> creepy little ham hams. <laughs> God, those things gave me <laughs> nightmares. Um, Gutsman. That would be Mega Man NT. Warriors. I was Gutsman, Cutman, all of the Cutman brothers. They were like this whole mafia family. <laughs> I got to use my favorite voice ever. Which, which was, was what? Sheldon Leonard. Yeah. Who nobody would remember. Well, he was, he was Nick the Bartender in It's a Wonderful Life. Wow. In this place, we save hot look at the men who want to get drunk fast. <laughs> he went on to be a big Hollywood producer. But I was <clears throat> Cutsman, Man, I was Shade Man, Man Man, you know. Man Man. Woe Man. <laughs> there was a lot of men on that show. It was a manly show. It was show a manly for manly man. men. Manly Too many men so manly, they need a man for a wife. <laughs> uh, Captain Napoli Polita. Oh, dear. That was the very first anime I ever did. Which was? Project Aiko. Oh, there you go. Captain Neapolita. And Mari, and there was one other character I played on that show. All three of them were women. Seriously? Yep. Like, you mean, at the end, they are revealed to be women? No, they were women. They were well, Mari was like this huge testosterone. I mean, she was yeah. like, but... No, yeah, that's when I first... That was my first exposure to anime, where I went, This jet weird! <laughs> Uh, Jetfire and Omega Supreme. That would have been one of the... It was either Energon, Cybertron, or Armada. Oh, you've got to pick two. It wouldn't have been the, the last one because I know that they decided to make Jetfire Australian. And did I do it? No, 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 well, I didn't. <laughs> so that would have made it Armada and Cybertron. Thank you very much for the uh, bonus. Armada and Energon ah, was, sh- I'm sorry, and you're not really Australian either because you failed. <laughs> Tell uh, my dad. I've we've had this conversation as a brief side. We've had this conversation before. I was drunk, but I, I felt you know the, <laughs> the conversation about how I felt that you hated my guts when I first on the scene because there was a couple of Australian characters. That, it was Pyro. But That's was, the one you were all worried yeah, about, was, and I don't give a crap. Because <laughs> let's face it, you were Wolverine for God's sake. Exactly. Uh, and, you know, I could sit there and go, "Nice Australian accent." <laughs> Mine is appalling, too. There's a difference between a real Aussie accent and one you would use for well, a cartoon there's show. there's a difference between any real accent yeah. and one you would use in a yeah, cartoon Yeah, I mean, show. if I'm working for American clients and they go, we want this character to be us, you know, it's like, well, you know, what part, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Well, the Australian uh, yeah. part. Yeah, here's your boy. You know, it's either that or, <laughs> yeah. you know, but it's the same. You know, it's like, oh, the guy's from New York. Yeah, well, yeah. you know yeah. what? Not everybody in New York talks exactly. that way. So or it Scotland tends... or anything exactly. like that. Oh, he's Scottish now, he's Scottish isn't he? Like that, I did the, the Highlander, the animated Highlander right. just recently. Yeah, and the animated Highlander is getting huge reviews. That has been well received. People have been well, very they, kind because it's, it's, it's got some big people behind it. <clears throat> it does. the 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 director of Akira was yeah. the dude behind yeah. it. Which, uh, yeah, so it's lots of stuff. Um, <clears throat> and uh, finally, my personal favorite. You ready for this? Briefs, pirates, Be- <laughs> but pirates in briefs. No, because cold is therapeutic. Alpine Craft Relief Gum. <laughs> and how do you get at this gum? You chew it out. That was the first one. You chew it out. Oh, the cool. weird thing was, people on the street, like, you can do brilliant work on stage. <laughs> or, you know, even film and television. If people see it, they do. If they don't, they don't. You do one commercial, and everybody <laughs> in the universe sees it, except yeah. me. Yeah, exactly. So I'm on the street, like, hey, hey, that's that gum, dude. Hey, gum, dude. Hey, <laughs> hey, chew it out. 
<laughs> what is that God, even mean? People have lost their face, gums, stop watching your television so Ew, much. Have you ever chewed your own gum? <laughs> Uh, some interesting things have occurred for you on the con circuit, and Martin has uh, provided a list. Um, when did the first Piccolo I'm a Cucumber song begin? Oh, boy. <laughs> it's become this... I don't even remember. <laughs> it's some con... Somebody had a little tiny, like, hand tape recorder, digital, like, memo, you know, uh, remind yourself to pick up groceries at two. <laughs> and they stuck it in my face, and they said, Can you sing the Cucumber song? And I went... Uh, what? Uh, I don't know what the cucumber song is. And they went, well, it goes, blah, 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 blah. and I went, oh, okay, so I went, I'm a cucumber. Uh, and, and then it got animated, and it became a thing. Just this, right. And the, the original song is from something else entirely, and I'm not sure what. But now it's it's become this kind of, this thing. <laughs> so it just started that simply, with somebody just going, oh, can you? Okay. Wow. Phenomenon. Phenomenon. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, of course. You know, silly minds think like. Uh, during one anime, North Convention, Scott was chained to a chair. Do you recall that, or was that uh, was that something that was maybe in the hotel? My therapist <laughs> and I have worked very hard to eradicate that memory, Trevor. But I got it back. Oh man, you don't know, man. Because I was chained to a chair. Uh, apparently, um, I, I wasn't there. I can't. Uh, I can neither confirm nor deny. How did they get into my room? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Do you remember? That stuff is private. <laughs> Do you remember battling? The with goat the... was there when we got the room. <laughs> by the way, I just want to be clear on that. <laughs> and he was high. So, yeah. Do you recall battling with lightsabers at a Toronto anime? I do indeed. And who was that with? Uh, a person with a lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it might have been Philippe. It was, it, it, was it, it might have been Vic. No, it, it, it sounds like something Vic would yeah, do. Yeah, but I don't think... But no, it was. there was a, a group of, of... Here's the thing. You've been at conventions. I have. You could be, like, on the planet Mercury, you know, steeped in the methane vapors there, and there <laughs> is a protoplasmic sort of space amoeba convention... <laughs> Or you could be in Nebraska at a plumber's convention. Or you could be anywhere in the universe at any convention, anytime. Why are there always stormtroopers? I, I, that is... Every convention yes. in the world. He's yes. welcome to the Dental Appliance Convention here in... <laughs> I don't know. I uh, see those uh, T-43s the other day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I think there was a group of, of, of fairly serious sort of Star Warsian types there. There was like a totally hot chick Darth Vader once. Ooh, hot I chick Darth Vader. I like lightsabered with her. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to pull her helmet off and look at her brain in it. Okay. <laughs> uh, the first time you heard the word glomp? Glomp. That's an official term, isn't Glomp it? Glomp is an official term, and I'm afraid of the word. Now. Yes, I've, I've seen I it Because I used happen. to clarify. People would go, you know, come up and go, excuse me, can I glomp you? A real glomp involves a lot of people, and it is a broadside. You do not see yeah. this coming. I foolishly, in Tampa, Florida this year, I mentioned that at a panel. Because oh, yeah. I like, you know, I'm you see me at cons. You're I'm very, very affectionate. Very and I like, yeah. I like to hug, and you know. So, But I said this, and this girl came flying out of nowhere from behind. Hit me, got me around the neck, and yanked back, and my something in my lower back went, and I was down and out. Oh, geez. So I'm a little <clears throat> glomp hesitant, so now I like a little, but a glomp is just one of those random, Aah! yeah. And in the like, especially when Gundam was big and stuff, yeah, it yeah. would involve like several hundred people sometimes. Yeah, that's not uh, with the good. With the, when it, you especially have to by the to... Sunday when the hygiene is I beginning know, to slip. That's right. It's getting a little ripe in there. And then... There's a lot of PVC <clears throat> at those things. And I gotta tell you, you know, I picked up what I'm calling Con I in where was it? It was Edmonton, I think, yeah. last year. Because I must have, you know, it was taking hugs and stuff. Mm -hmm. And at some point on Saturday, I must have just kind of like... The term con is my now eye. becoming part of the lexicon. Well, I, I hope it's, a ter you know, I hope it's well avoided. Because I woke up at four in the morning going, have I got pink eye? What is this? And it was a full-on infection. So con eye was Yeah, I've come eye. back with a few nastinesses. Mm -hmm. from... yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the Is that a challenge battle between Scott and Chris Sabat? That was the very first time I ever met Chris. And we were going to be at the same convention. And it was the only line I could remember from Piccolo. <laughs> and Chris was the one that took over the role of Piccolo on, uh, yeah. on DBZ. Right. So the first time I met him, I think I just walked into him. He was like, is that a challenge? And he turned to me and he goes, is that a challenge? 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 <laughs> and that was how we met. Chris is amazing, dude. Actually, I like Chris a lot. Uh, the shock a Beast Wars fan got when he found out Scott was one of the voices. 
Well, that was the very first con. If, if, if he's talking about what I think he's talking about. Um, that was the very first convention I had ever done. That was down oh, in really? Anaheim in 98. And you know, like I said, I've been doing this 10 years. You, know, you go to the studio, right. you go home, you take out the garbage. Nobody goes, oh my. Yeah. So I'm at this thing and I'm wandering around. It's <clears> the first day and they're having this dinner. And there was like a thousand people at this dinner. And I'm just going, wow, this is freaking amazing, <laughs> man. And I, I stop and there, there's a, a, a young guy. God, I wish I could remember his name. But he's drawing a picture of, of Waspinator. And I'm standing behind him, and I just went, Oh, Waspinator likes picture. <laughs> and he just, you know, the shoulders kind of went, Eat. One of these slow turns. Uh, oh. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I mean, I've told the story a million times, but, you know, I'm thinking, they're thinking, like, am I on fire, or is there a spider on my shoulder? What? Oh, oh, my God. You're, sc you're, sc you know, and it's like, wow, I just was looking at your picture. I think you're, wow, you're amazing. And, I mean, that's that was my indoctrination wow. into con world. <clears throat> wow, well, that's a hell of a good way to Yeah, to it was the first time in. anybody had ever gone. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, Other than, who are you? Was that you? <laughs> uh, the Elvis costume audition story. Oh God! <laughs> I don't. I don't know any of these. I don't know what these are. This I'm is. Just, I mean, when I, don't write know, them. when I was first getting started, I get this call from agents. Okay, you know, they're uh, you got this thing, and I'd never been to this studio. And I was like, okay, they're looking. You know, there's this character. They're looking for an Elvis character. <laughs> so okay, you know, and I used to actually believe it or not make my living as an Elvis impersonator. Jeez, so what haven't you done, McNeil? My God, that was true. That was. <laughs> Well, there was the one thing, but no, I draw the line. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm thinking, oh, dude, I got such an edge. Because I'm thinking, you know, I mean, they'll probably be like city. So, you know, I'll do the freaking hair up, man. You know, and I was thinking, you know, the skinny Elvis, young Elvis, and I like skinny Elvis, so. <laughs> so, man, I, I gave myself a whole skinny Elvis down, man. I got the, you know, I got like the 68 comeback outfit on. I got the fucking hairs up. And, and I go in and I'm looking at these guys with like ponytails and earrings. And I'm going... What a bunch of losers. <laughs> they don't stand a chance. And the guy's looking at me. He's like, okay, we're ready for you in the recording studio. Are you Scott? Yeah. <laughs> Are you insane? Possibly. <laughs> Did you ask Dobson about his clown story? Because it's a hundred times more embarrassing than that one. <laughs> Too bad he's already been on the show. Yeah, no, ask him in person, though. It's hysterical. Uh, finding out who else plays World of Warcraft. Everyone plays, World, everyone of plays Warcraft. World of Warcraft. Half the conventions, you know, now we spend most of my time in panels talking late. Talking wow. <laughs> talking wow. The expansion oh, package coming out soon. Totally Everyone's like, what server are you on? I'm, uh, I, I still have not taken the plunge. Don't, I have don't, the don't, demo here, don't, but I, yeah, I'm very scared of it because I, I saw what happened to you, man. Yeah, I know. I saw how you went down. I used you just to didn't be. leave your house, man. It's true. Uh, and finally, of course, you are now officially famous because there is a Wikipedia blurb mentioning uh, the Scott McNeil autograph line and the everybody else line. <laughs> I have arrived. <laughs> Mama, I done good. Thank God Almighty, I have arrived at last. <laughs> uh, Martin finishes off by saying, uh, but what makes Scott special to all of us is his dedication and compassion for his work and his fans. Aww. And he would like to start off uh, the fan questions. This is rare that Martin actually asks a fan question, but this, this comes from, uh, from Martin, Martin in Toronto. Himself. If Mel Blanc was alive today and you had the chance to meet him, what would you ask? I would like so fanboy on his ass, man. I'm just like, oh, 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 oh. And he would just he'd turn to you and go, Well no, it's just it's a really good picture. I just yeah. you know, I thought I'd <laughs> How would I get started in voiceover? What would I ask him? God, I don't know. Yeah. I mean I, I, I could spend days just listening to the man and talking to him, watching, you know, what he does. <clears throat> You know, well, now you know what it's like for your family. Well, right? I watched, I looked up on the internet, because I get, I get as much a kick out of it as anybody. And I found a bunch of stuff on you, and I found interviews with Mel Blanc. And it doesn't matter. When the real dude opens his mouth and does that character, you know, like, you know, a million people in this world can do Homer Simpson, and pretty good. But when you see Dan Castle, you know, when you see him do it, you go, whoa! <laughs> you know, which is why I think I have so much fun at cons, because, you know, I'm the same, I'm on both sides of that yeah. street. You know, if somebody, you know, to get a Transformers convention, you know, I know that, you know, when I, you know, because yeah. everybody does Waspinator yeah, now, yeah. but yeah. when I do it, it's, it's like... It's a thing. So, it's... I mean, I found some stuff in Mel Blanc, and I was just, like, tripping, because, you know, when he riffs through it, it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> There's another great with the whole cast of The Simpsons on... Uh, 
I can't oh, remember which. Oh, it was like inside, inside the actor's the studio. The actor's yes, studio yes, with yes. me because I'm very serious. Yes, and very pretentious. And it's just, it's this, it's that same flippy buzz of just like, you know, yeah. when he opens his mouth, you're like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're fucking mad. You're like totally freaking apu, man. Yeah, it's, that's got to be, I mean, yeah, what do you say? What yeah. do you say to, yeah, to, but, your, you know, to your hero? I mean, you know, you know I mean, it's not like I have this one question. Yeah, here, exactly. Well, Tell me, why did your son not turn out to be <laughs> any good? Uh, let's move on to the actual fan questions now. This one is from our good friend. Are you Daniela. suggesting that Martin's friend was not an actual no, fan? I'm Trevor? saying that he is far, far bigger than just a mere fan. Oh, I see. He is the provider of the mailbag. He's a super yeah. fan. Yeah, super, super fan. fan. Super fan. Hi. So Daniela <laughs> says, "Hi, Trevor and Scott. Hi, Daniela. Uh, you look nice tonight. Doesn't she just?" Question. If you could have Let's backstage just... passes, backstage passes to any event, which event would it be, and what would you do back there? <laughs> wow. Body like a rock star. <laughs> backstage like passes to like any a event. Rock star. Sometimes going to conventions is like having a backstage it, pass. It kind of is. We got one. It was in Dallas, I think. This was right at the height of like craziness, and we did a thing on. Kirby was there. I called the, and, and after the thing, like five thousand people rushed the stage. So all of a sudden, the Dallas security phalanx went, whoosh, and we got, whoosh, and all of a sudden we're going through all these weird little tunnels in the back of the conventions. And it was like, thank you, Cleveland, rock, rock and roll, man. Where are we? Where the hell are we? Um, I don't know. God, there's a lot. You know what? I'm going to see Van freaking Halen with Maddie Hill on the fifth. Oh, of course. And of course you are. With I did a Hill movie naturally. called Sleeping with Strangers, and I basically based my character on David Lee Roth <laughs> because I had my greatest embarrassing moment in the studio ever with him. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it was when I first started. We used to record at Little Mountain Sound, and that's where all of... Like, this is a true story. My yeah. very first ever walking into the studio for my very first job, poof! Right into, physically smack into Steven Tyler from Aerosmith. <laughs> this is right when all the top hard rock albums. Right. And right, so right. I was, at one point, I was goofing around with the guys from Poison in the lobby, and I'm doing, you know, just sing along everywhere I go. People know the pop. And then, ha, ha. And then all of a sudden I go, everyone's looking here and not here. And I turned, <laughs> and there was Dave, like, hey, you're pretty funny. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I would, yeah. I would think, see. I don't know if you remember me, Mister, Mister, Mister Van Halen singer, sir, man, <laughs> Mister, Mister Lee Roth. Can I call you Mister David Mr. Diamond? Is that a is that a version <laughs> of Lee Roy? Are you Lee part? Roy, you I don't understand. But uh, I don't know. I mean, I'd like to go back. To, I don't know. I don't go out much. I know. Me neither. I would like to go backstage into the world of Warcraft. <laughs> find out how it all works. I want to find out what's on that Game Master's Island. <laughs> Uh, uh, Melissa. Melissa says she's, she's been. Uh, Melissa says this. Melissa says she's been saving this question uh, for the next time you were in Toronto, but she doesn't know when that's going to be, so she's going to ask it here. I know who this is. Uh, she says I've noticed a lot on YouTube that when someone asks what your most memorable fan moment is, you tend to talk about the strange ones, like the time the girl who apparently had never seen a toothbrush in her life ran up and licked you. What I'd like to know, <laughs> what I'd like to know is what are the most endearing moments you've ever had with the fans? Oh, what are dude. some of the most endearing things fans have done for you to show their admiration and appreciation? I, I've had some amazing moments with fans. I mean, or with fans. This is, this, this is the serious part of the show. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've got letters or, or had parents get in touch with me. And, you know, with the kind of the, like, uh, you know, like uh, my daughter was diagnosed four years ago with, you know, significant or with very serious unipolar depression, blah, blah, blah. But you sat down with her at this con and you spent like two hours talking with her and I just want you to know that that is the first time in like four years that I have seen my little girl smile. Right. And she, Or, you know, there's been cases of deaths where, you know, people have come in and said, you know, this is a picture of my little brother and the last four years of his, or four months of his life while he was in the hospital. I mean, he watched Gundam Wing. He, that's what kept him... Uh, there's a beautiful, 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 beautiful young lady that I met in Lafayette. And I got a letter from her, and it was a picture of her mom. And her mom was obviously very young, and it was just one of those like, uh-oh. Mm. And her mom had passed away. And she was, I don't know, she's just a really remarkable young woman. And I kept that letter. I kept it in my my in my little ugly yellow and black backpack that I take to conventions. And then when I was in Louisiana later on that year... She came up in line and she had this collage of stuff because she and her mom did a bunch of stuff together, you know, involving my show and some shows that I'd worked on. And I went, oh, my God, you're you. And she's like, do you know? And I went, 
did you get my letter? I went, yeah, I have it right here. <laughs> and I mean, you know, that was a wet scene. We were both just sobbing away. Wow. And, and, you know, I got another letter from her recently. She's one of those ones that sticks in my mind. There's a lot like that. I got a really cool one from, uh, from or actually, no, it was a website. It was somebody's sort of their blog. And it was a dad, kind of a single dad guy. And he was telling the story of a botcon that he went to. And he had his kid there. You know, and I gather there have been some problems with the kid and stuff. Or not problems, but... You know, just trying to trying to find that ground, and Gary and I, you know, saw him in the in the restaurant at the hotel, and we went over, we hung out with them, and sang, and blah blah blah. And he ran, and he was like, you know what? He said when when Mr. Chalk and Mr. McNeil walked over, and it was like, you know, hey Bill, how you doing, man? We met you the other day, we sat down, and we you know we had basically had breakfast with him and stuff. He said. My kid looked at me like I was a freaking hero. <laughs> you know, and it's retarded, right? Because, you know, I'm a schmuck, and you know I'm a schmuck, and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, there's a certain perception. You know, you do get a chance. You know, if I get sort of, you know, the, the, the 13 year old girl is like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. My artwork is so horrible. And I'm like, I totally suck. And, eh. and I look at it and I go, oh my God, this stuff is amazing. You mm-hmm. have a huge amount of talent. She may have heard that from her parents or from whatever. But because of this little skewed perception that I am this and they right. are that. It means so much more. It, it than seems to, you know. So you must use your powers only for good, Trevor. <laughs> and never like that one time in Toronto. But we don't talk about that. Not on the air, please. Right, sorry, sorry. Can we start again? I'm sorry. I didn't know we were. I thought it was rehearsal. Uh, incidentally, I think I've that, had uh, a lot of moments like that, which have been yeah. really extraordinary and cool and very humbling, actually. They are. I. I, I you go to these cons because your head gets all just like, no, 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 no. Yeah, it's, it's well. I've it, seen it you. I've seen way. you with these kids, and I got to tell you, it's not you. You yeah. are unbelievable. I mean, yeah. I mean, you, I got a swelled head at the normal times, of but course. at the cons. No, but I mean, you're you you know you won't leave until everybody gets their autograph. No, you're awesome. You're you're you're, you're just you're an inspiration oh. to see. You know, it's too. I, I, so when I see you to cons, I'm thinking that that boy knows how to treat his fans. Of course. Uh, that, by the way, Melissa, that is the best question ever. I've decided. Dun dun dun! That takes the prize for best question ever. If you're ever in Vancouver <laughs> on the last Wednesday of the month. <laughs> and you want to have more fun than you can possibly have at the fabulous Anza Club. Trevor himself hosts the Anza Bonanza Pub Quiz. The one of a kind, the only one in Canada. And I go like every Wednesday and we have so much fun. And Trevor is brilliant. Oh, that. thank you, sir. So I thank will you, plug sir. you heavily on that. I recommend it to everybody now. I'm like, dude, <laughs> seriously, if you've never done a pub quiz, come. <clears throat> Isn't it amazing? Because it's just the simplest little setup and yet people have such a ball. It's great. I know. It's great. Trevor reminded me of that with his... This is my favorite question of the night. <laughs> and this time I really mean it. A uh, couple more here. This one's from Nancy. Hi, Nancy. Uh, in South Holland, Illinois. Um, and she says, I understand the technical reasons for not recording with other cast members. She's talking about ADR. Here, talking about. Uh, but do you think your characterizations would be different if you had the other actors with you? Uh, well... I mean, yeah, I mean, subtly, yes. <clears throat> I mean, generally, if I'm, I'm going, you know, I kind of go, okay, who's playing that guy? Who's playing that? Who's playing mm-hmm. this person? Because you, you get an idea of where they're likely to have gone with it. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've ever touched on the difference between prelay and, and yeah, a couple times. Okay, so yeah, they, so they they should we're know dealing by with now. an educated audience. Yes, so they're well educated. It is more fun and more freeing. Not only are you free from the technical aspect in dubbing of having to act with someone else's lips because you have to fit flaps. But it is, I mean, it's, it's obviously way more fun in the studio when you get a chance to, you know, at the lightest of times, just to riff with other people. And, you know, and to, to, to use the dreaded actor parlance, but, you know, to, to act and react with another human being, you know, to chance to play back and forth. It, it makes it, I think, a little more spontaneous. Spontaneitis. It might spontaneitis. It's more spontaneitis. <coughs> but, you know, the challenge then in dubbing is, of course, to make that. And I've watched some stuff where once it's cut together, you go, God damn. Yeah. You'd never know. <laughs> You'd never know. That cut together pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what he said. <laughs> yeah, what I said. Uh, our last one's from Evan in my hometown of Edmonton. This I love this question. The it's, Chuck. It's not the, uh, it's not the best question ever, but it is a good one. Oh, Evan. Yeah, no, he Evan. didn't mean that. Huh? No, no, you'll have to try harder, Evan. I, I told you to try God hard. Sake, your disappointment to us all. If you could have one superpower, what would it be and why? That's the first one, and that's that's a good one. So you get it. The second to think of that. Somebody just asked me this. Oh, really? So you're Houston, prepared so for this? So I had the whole flight home. <laughs> to think about this question. Shapeshifter. Oh. Well, now why, though? That's, that's Because if I want to fly, I shift into a form that can fly. 
If I need x-ray vision, I want to see what's going on in the girl's shower room. <laughs> I turn into a little ladybug. I want to get wait, through wait a, a minute, wall. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Ladybugs don't have x-ray vision. No, no you, see, they don't need them because they're I, small and they have multifaceted I, eyes. You, you don't know. You don't know. <laughs> if I need to bamf through a wall, you know, I just go subatomic. <laughs> Right. So this well, is actually right. not really my own answer. Somebody else said that, and I went, and they said when I went, that makes total it perfect does. sense. It does. Uh, yeah. So whoever I'm ripping off right now, I salute you because you are obviously far smarter than I am. And he's going to send but you a nickel. A shapeshifter can literally find some form that will facilitate, or you know, or will be a facsimile of any power that you need. Right. It's like the, if you had three wishes. Mine would be to grant myself an infinite supply of wishes. Which, of course, you cannot do. Cannot do. Says who? Says the genie in a bottle that it's the first rule they teach you in genie in a bottle school. You cannot have the power to grant yourself wishes. That's right. Thou shalt not grant more wishes using a wish. What if I choose to become a genie? Then you end up in eternity. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Somebody else asked me, what would I do if I was 535 feet tall? Specifically 535. It was very specific. And all I could think of was I would have a hell of a time buying shoes. <laughs> Which I think is the best answer ever. Yes. <laughs> uh, and this is the uh, the part two to this question. Uh, because other voice actors look up to you. I, I'm not sure where he gets that. I don't That's know. Interesting. But, uh, because it's because I'm over nine feet tall, friend. <laughs> and I because shoot fire from my eyes. 535, 535 feet, feet tall. tall. Until he changes into a ladybug. Because other voice actors look up to you, um, who do you look up to? Or, and I love this, do you just look down on everyone? <laughs> Thanks. What's this kid's name? <laughs> We're coming for you, Evan. Edmonton. It's an hour and a half flight. I will be there, pal. Um, first of all, that's very flattering to think. Well, I better not even think that. But uh, who do I look up to? Well, I mean, obviously Mel Blanc. Yes. Who, you know, a lot of old school guys. Uh, Paul Fries, who was, mm-hmm. you know, the voice of uh, many things, actually. I looked him up one day and I went, oh, my God. Yeah. He was, like, on everything. <laughs> you know, these are those uh, people now. Um, you know, Maurice LaMarche is in... I've only ever met him once and we weren't even... But, you know, he doesn't know it. But I love him. <laughs> I love him. I spend a lot of time camped outside of his window in L.A. <laughs> just waiting for him to notice me. He's Canadian. I mean, he was the voice of the brain on Pinky and the Brain and stuff. I just, I think he's extraordinary. Uh, There's a lot of people working right now. Uh, Jim Cummings, who I do not think is a very nice man Hmm. at all. Why? He certainly does not care for Canadians and has been not shy at all about it. Yes, true. But as far as the best pound for pound ability to replicate anything vocally, I mean, you know, his Winnie the Pooh is Sterling Holloway. Right. You know, there's no difference. He's that good. He, I mean, there's some extraordinary cats in L.A. I mean, here, I mean, you know, well, Trevor DeVault, actually, so obviously. Right, obligatory you know, I don't complete. like to sort of look at my, but there are people that have just have been doing it longer than me that yeah. I go, wow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have a lot of, I have offer people that I worked with. I had offer you the first, in the first year you were working, because I went, where the fuck did this guy come from? <laughs> Because, you know, talent is as talent does, right, listeners? Um, you know, and when you see it, you're like, wow, you know, it's Freak Show City. There's there's a couple of people that have just started doing stuff now, and I go, oh, yeah, crap. This and you, guy's and like, you can always tell. As you can always steal the studio, from the new kids, too. Remember that. <laughs> you don't just have to steal from the old guys. If you're the first one to get it on The Tonight Show, it's yours. <laughs> and on that note... Uh, we have gone so long, which I kind of anticipated we might with this particular episode. First of all, thanks to everybody who uh, wrote in with your uh, questions Hi, and Melissa. your comments, you know, that stuff. Congratulations to Melissa as well for the best question best ever. Best question ever. Uh, thanks, for Martin, or thanks, Martin, for all the, the stuff in the mailbag this week. Uh, remember, uh, guys, too, to send in your pics and videos and stuff like that of, of any sort of interesting things uh, concerning Vancouver voice actors that you found at conventions. I'd like to sort of assemble a little thing on the web site um scotty mcneil it has been my tremendous pleasure if martin can have martin's mailbag can i have scotty scrotum <laughs> because a mailbag is it a... okay never mind and cut <laughs> crtc pulls our license <laughs> yes thankfully we're not bound by such petty human rules <laughs> uh thanks for coming it was awesome it was um, my pleasure sir. it uh it, it was great our next guest uh, on the show is actually a duo this is going to be super cool and it's a bit gentlemen, of a diversion gentlemen gentlemen time to bring your attention back to center stage <laughs> it's duo night <laughs> this is a bit of a, a bit of a, a bit of a departure for us <laughs> here um because uh, our next guests Siegfried are and Roy? going to be yeah but there's only but, so it's yeah. only, but, right. only one talk 
fox breaking smell. in. Yeah, with the whole tiger yeah. hair, and it's not good. Okay. But um, no, it's going to be Carl and Mike from Ocean Studios, a director and uh, a technician. Mike, who's actually no longer technically at Ocean for the ADR stuff, because he took the job down the street at... Um, uh, postmodern. But well, also, and I'm going to embarrass the hell of him, does the best Hank Hill you'll oh, ever hear. Oh, and he will be doing that on yeah, the show. Guaranteed. I stole my Hank Hill from him. <clears throat> oh, yeah. he's It's unbelievable. He'll be doing that. But Carl and Mike are going to be our guests. So they're going to talk a little bit about the um, the technical side of things that we don't often uh, get a chance to talk to on the show. Uh, and then after that, it's going to be our good friend Brian Drummond, who's going to be on the show. Uh, so the show is is going onwards and upwards. Uh, once again, Scotty, thank you so much for Absolutely, joining us here today. Travers, my it, pleasure indeed. Uh, if you have any questions for uh, Carl and Mike, uh, send them in to voiceprint at trevordeval.com. And as always, send your comments, queries, concerns to me at fans at trevordeval.com. And don't forget to send in those pics and videos. Uh, it's going to be awesome. Thanks, guys. Take care. We will see you next time. Okay, we love you. Bye-bye.